Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech Ask, where you guys have asked us loads of questions in the comments by using hashtag AskGMBNTech, and we try and respond to them in a show like this. So let's get started. Uh, first question is from Samster the Gamer, who says, hashtag GM, ask GMBN Tech, what happens if you cut the steerer tube too short? Just curious, with a smiley face. <laughs> Asking for a friend, are we? Um, so the general rule of thumb is that you want maybe five mil of space between the top and your steerer tube. So that could be the top of a spacer, it could be the top of your stem. As long as you have that five mil gap, then when you put the top cap on and you screw the bolt in, it'll pull on say the star nut that is within your steerer and clamp it all together nicely. And that amount of space gives you enough to create that clamp. Um, if you've cut it too short and it goes below the point that you want with a spacer, for example, or I'm guessing below um, the bolt on your stem, that is not ideal. Um, I do have a stem that sort of illustrates the point. If your steerer is below this bolt, then you're not clamping onto anything. So it's not secure, but also you'll end up clamping the steerer um, sort of uh, unequally and it might even snap the top of the steerer or it just might not be very secure um, and it's really suboptimal. So if you've cut it too short, if you've cut it too short a little bit and you just want a little bit of a correction, uh, perhaps your bolt isn't getting into the star nut, you can't get a bolt that's long enough to reach it and you're not getting good purchase, um, then you might want to remove that star nut and go for uh, something more of an expander. So some of them can be quite long. Uh, for example, um, a Hope Head Doctor is a little bit longer than usual, uh, where it will go into the steerer tube and expand from uh, the inside out. Um, you might get a little bit more purchase there, although I still wouldn't want to run that um, if the steerer is below the bolt. You, you, you definitely don't want to be doing that. So if you're worried about the security, perhaps you're, if you're doing enduro and you're worried about the security of that kind of fastening system, because uh, I've not tried it, um, then you can just go and get it replaced. Fork steerer tube can actually be removed and replaced by a professional. So go to your local service uh, suspension technicians or service center, and it's quite likely that they will offer that service for you. Um, and it will certainly be cheaper than buying a new set. So uh, that is what you can do. Uh, question two from Tom Short says, um, hi Daddy and Anna, asking for a friend. There's a lot of this today. Um, really, I am. But I'm the fellow doing the work. Is it possible to swap hub drivers from Shimano to SRAM XD? Does the whole hub need to be changed out? Um, okay, that's two questions, thanks. So it depends. Um, so you're wanting to move from Shimano to XD, which is what I've got here. Uh, some hubs, they literally just pop out. So on my note proof, I've got some uh, spank wheels and they have um, a system where you can pull the uh, end cap off and pull the whole hub body out. And if you take that and the spacer underneath it, you can literally swap it uh, with another one. And it is literally like a minute's work on that hub. But others uh, like this one here, it's not gonna come out um, too easily. Um, some of them require a bit of um, finickety maintenance and some of them just won't change at all. So you haven't told me what brand you've got, um, but you will need to find the user manual for those wheels and check out what you can do about it. Um, it might come apart, it might not. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have to start with the manual, I'm afraid, but if you're changing over the drivetrain uh, from Shimano to SRAM, consider that the cassette um, 
uh, that works with that Freehub body might actually work with the drivetrain that you're changing it to. Uh, there are some incompatibilities with, uh, say, uh, Shimano Hyperglide cassettes where they might not work very well with SRAM. Um, but have a look at what you've got and see if you can do some research on whether they are compatible because you might be able to change the drivetrain and keep that style of cassette and Freehub body anyway. So question three, Mr. Grey Fox Zero, I'm riding a Magura MT7 brake on my mountain bike. After about a year and a half, I've noticed that the back plate of my brake pads start to corrode. Uh, that's a long time to have brake pads. Um, is it a good idea to put a thin layer of copper paste behind the pads uh, and the pistons uh, while it's uh, to stop the metal reaction? Um, I'm always dubious about putting stuff on brake pads um, or, you know, uh, rotors that's not disc brake cleaner or isopropyl alcohol, basically. Um, <clears throat> I would say if there's a little bit of rust, it won't be too much of an issue. You might find that um, it's really noisy or perhaps they wear your rotors quicker, perhaps. Um, if there's a lot of rust and the rust is coming through onto the pad itself, perhaps you touch them and there's a lot of orange coming uh, onto your hands, um, then that might uh, reduce the performance of your brakes altogether. So I don't know if, if you own a car, perhaps if you've ever left your car um, sat in the rain for a week or so and then you go off to drive and then your brakes aren't working great and they make a load of noise and they don't feel brilliant, uh, that's because they've rusted. They rust quite easily and the same will happen with mountain bike um, pads, especially if you have steel backed um, pads. So I would say clean them up, give them a good brush, um, perhaps with a wire brush and some isopropyl alcohol, clean them up real good um, and see if you can get that surface rust off and then bed them in again, uh, go through the process um, as we advise on the channel, um, check out our other videos on how to bed in properly and get them working again. I've actually recently done a video on how to clean your disc rotors properly and deeply and inspect them. Uh, so you might want to check that out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Um, and generally just keep an eye on them and see if your brakes are still working properly and then the corrosion isn't causing any damage or too much wear. Uh, but all of the details on how you can work out if your brakes are still safe should be in that video that I've linked below. Uh, next up from 51M Hari. Uh, says, are there any general rules or guidelines concerning stem length, bar width and seat position? Is there such a thing as stem too short or bars too far back? Is there a target torso angle when seated? Um, I mean, the quick answer is no, there's no rule of thumb. Uh, if you have, a, there, I've done a video recently on handlebar width or handlebars explained. I'll leave that linked in the description below as well. Um, and as you'll see from that video, I go on, go on to explain um, that handlebar width can de depend on a number of things, uh, not only your, you know, your body composition, but also your preference, but also your style of riding. Um, so my bikes have a load of different sizes on them, uh, different sweeps depending on what I prefer on that bike, uh, not to mention what I uh, am as a, a height and width style of rider. Um, my enduro bike has 760 bars, whereas my XC bike has 740s, I believe. So there isn't a formula. Um, and if you watch the video, you'll understand um, why you would go for more or less. Uh, and also sweep and rise can depend on ergonomics, but also preference and style of riding. So do check out that video. Um, I won't read out the whole question, I'll put it on screen, but you do go on to say um, that your, your seated position allows your knees to be above the pedals in the three o'clock position. That is brilliant. That is 
the that is the place I would always start with a bike fitting. Um, but everything else you've mentioned in terms of uh, your reach and your handlebars will just be you needing to play with those different things uh, incrementally in order to make the bike feel good for you. It is a process, it's not a one-time event. Bike fitting can take a while. Um, you've mentioned that your bars may feel too wide and that your reach is too long. So see if you can borrow a stem and play around with shortening that reach with a shorter stem. Um, and also your bars, you've tried moving your hands in and it feels better. If it feels better, go for it. Chop them down. Maybe start with a centimeter either end and see how that feels and just keep bringing it in if you feel it makes a positive benefit. Um, certainly for trail you want a little bit of bend in your arm and you want to feel relaxed. Uh, you've also quickly here mentioned a target torso angle. There isn't really one. I know people say that there is a certain act angle but I would say for XC we do tend to go quite low so it's a more efficient pedaling uh, position and it's efficient for climbing but as long as your hips aren't raising you can go as low as you want to. For trail um, as you can see in the handlebar video being low isn't always great certainly not for descending so you might want to come up uh, depending on your style. Do check out that video. Um, question five from Rimaloy who says, Hi, I intended to make a mullet setup on one of my bikes. There will be pros and cons, of course, but which is better route in terms of handling and speed? Uh, should I put a 29 fork on my 27.5 bike or put a 27.5 rear wheel on my 29er bike? Uh, what do you reckon? I don't know about handling or speed because I don't know which bike you've got or what the geometry is or what you uh, like to ride. Um, that's all a bit objective. However, I know that putting a 29er front wheel into a 27.5 bike uh, will be um, more costly and require more parts. So you would need a 29er wheel, obviously, but then the 29er wheel might not fit in your 27.5 fork. So you might want to consider um, changing the forks out. Uh, with a 29er bike, um, you can potentially just put a 27.5 in the rear. Obviously, you've, you know, you've acknowledged that this will change the geometry of your bike. Um, usually it'll drop, so um, a 27.5 on a 29er, we usually drop the back end by about 10 mil uh, and slacken everything by one degree. Um, so just start thinking about uh, find the geometry of each of those bikes and think about how it will change each of those bikes, uh, whether you would prefer that new geometry um, and whether you can afford to go down the 29er with new fork route anyway. Um, experiment, there's no, there's no rule on that. Uh, finally, from Andrew NZ, uh, hey guys, had a small spill over the, the other day, ended up bending my right brake lever on Shimano XT, uh, must have hit a rock directly. Uh, I simply bent it back by hand and it seems fine, but was wondering if I should be looking at replacing it. There is no sign of creasing or cracks, so hopefully it should be okay. What do you think? I actually did this uh, quite badly uh, to my Nuke Proof Mega when I was shooting the, the Christmas special. Um, and you can bend them back. Um, if you've bent it back and it seems fine, it didn't go soft um, to the point when you straightened it, it might be fine, but it is now compromised in terms of strength. It will be weaker. Uh, so potentially if you were to do that crash again, in theory, um, you could knock it and it might snap off next time. Um, so it's kind of, I don't think you're at a risk of it failing under normal braking, um, but maybe in a crash scenario, it would be more likely to crash. Um, I've In the Christmas special, I bent it and it didn't quite work out and I bent it back and after two, um, two and a bit actual bends, it literally snapped off. So that's how much you've got to work with. If you bend it again 
uh, it's probably not going to work. Um, I would probably, you might not need to replace it now uh, if you want to save pennies, but I would certainly start saving up for a replacement because you might need one next time it happens. Uh, but anyway, that's all I've got time for. So thanks for watching. And if after watching this, you have any burning questions, use hashtag AskGMBNTech down in the comments, and then we can find that question and answer it for you. Thanks for watching.